Hi, this is Carnival Bello. I'm here with my second Pillars of Eternity 2 Dead Fire video. Uh, this video will focus on permanent uh, attribute point improvements that you can get for your character. So, starting off, the first of these improvements will come from importing a save game from Pillars of Eternity 1. If you didn't play that game or don't have your old save files, we can make our own right here in Pillars of Eternity 2. To do this, we go into the options, and then we select this bottom most option, set PoE1 game stats, and then we create a new history for our upcoming character, which we haven't created yet, but we will do later. So let's create this history. It is presented in the storybook form, which is nice. Essentially, we're really looking at two options here to get us those attribute points. The first of these is under companions. We click on that. And then we have the option here. I refuse to sacrifice a companion or I sacrificed a companion. This is referring to a sacrificial pit that you would have come across in your journeys in Pillars of Eternity 1. If you had a cruel disposition, that is you had uh, done enough cruel acts that it was uh, attached as a tag to your character, you had the option of sacrificing a companion. So to get this point, we have to sacrifice a companion, which we would have done in the first game. And then we have to choose which companion that we sacrificed. Using this method, I think we can only sacrifice one companion. Uh, just going down the list to jog your memories, we have Adair, who is a, a generally generous soul. And uh, he and Aloth uh, protected and assisted you through much of the early game in the first Pillars of Eternity. We have Aloth, who's generally a good person, who uh, has an extra soul bound into his body. We have Kana, who was also a good-natured bard. We have Sagani, uh, who was a nomadic ranger <laughs> and mother. And then we have Durance, who, while definitely not a charismatic person, uh, certainly hard to define as bad. He was certainly devout in his own way to his beliefs, but hard to say he was evil. Then we have Heravias. Heravias was a druid who could turn into a Stelgar, and he was horrified by this fact and outcast from his uh, druidic order. However, again, not necessarily a bad person. Then we have Palangina, who's present in Pillars of Eternity 2, like Eater and Aloth, so you might want to think twice about sacrificing her because you'll be giving up a potential NPC that can join your party. Also, not a bad person. Then we have Grieving Mother, who did some extremely horrible things uh, while trying to do the right, quote unquote, the right thing, uh, and then erased her own memory so she wouldn't have to deal with that trauma anymore. At the end of the, well, at the end of her quest in the first game, you had the choice of uh, giving her those memories back or uh, allowing her to continue existing without any knowledge of them ever occurring. Uh, both were pretty bitter endings. They weren't very satisfactory for her. Um, the Devil of Karak is the next one. She was a basically a golem. She was a soul inside a metallic body. Uh, she was a thief and a murderer for the most part. Uh, she wasn't entirely unsympathetic, but, but certainly uh, vengeance is what really drove her. Um, there is a breastplate that you get in Pillars of Eternity 2, which is made out of her body, and it is extremely powerful. You can also steal this breastplate. Now, if you choose to sacrifice her in this storybook, uh, POE uh, history creator, it does not affect your ability to get that breastplate, which is kind of crazy. So you can sacrifice her and get the breastplate. And I've had this happen in most of my games because I was using a history for a long time that had her sacrificed in the pit. And it was created via this method. She was dead. I got the plus one dexterity and the plus one penetration against Kith. And I also got the breastplate in game. Incidentally, it is a legendary breastplate that you can steal, i.e. get for free. So... Uh, I don't know. For me, she's the least sympathetic of all the characters listed here. Her bonuses, if you're playing the, the pause based game, is one of the strongest, plus one to dexterity and plus one to penetration when fighting Kith. 
and you still get her breastplate in game which you can steal so you get it for zero dollars so for me this is usually my go-to choice here as i said using this method you can only choose one i'm not sure what would happen if you had an actual save game from pillars of eternity one where you sacrificed all these characters potentially you might be able to get 12 attribute points but i i don't know this is the one method i know and you can only choose one of these characters zahua was a monk and uh, again, not a, not a terrible person. I, I would feel bad to sacrifice him. And uh, Maneha, again, like Grieving Mother, is another character with memory troubles, but also not a bad person. Honestly, uh, if you're looking for some way to, to justify this reprehensible act, I would suggest going with Grieving Mother or Devil of Karak to, to get thrown in the pit. But it's entirely up to you, even if you want to choose this option. Incidentally, the, uh, the game does try and smooth over your past ethical transgressions uh, by suggesting that uh, who you are after Bareth runs off with half your soul, not Bareth, Eothas runs off with half your soul is not the same person uh, you become Barefet of that soul. So uh, I, I don't know if this was uh, on purpose from the creators trying to uh, emphasize that your character was different and his past transgress transgressions might be considered separate from who he is in Pillar or who she is in Pillars of Eternity 2. But uh, yeah, if that matters to you in your CRPG, it's, it's, it's there. So let's choose the Devil of Karak. So that's plus one to dexterity and a very powerful plus one to weapon penetration against Kith uh, antagonists. And Kith is basically any race that you can select from the character's creation screen. So we'll click on that and then we're done here. Again, we can choose more, but I, I'm pretty sure only one will count for this method. Uh, additionally, I would strongly suggest uh, don't choose Eater, Aeloth, Canna, or Palangina for this method as uh, they are significant to this playthrough. Eater, Aleth, and Palagina the most. Canna may crop, if you choose to sacrifice them, it may cost you uh, one of your uh, NPC followers in your playthrough if you're not careful. All right, so we're done here. That is our uh, plus one uh, attribute point from sacrificing a companion in Pillars of Eternity 1. Definitely an evil, evil act. The next uh, attribute point will come from Defiance Bay. So we'll click on that. And what we're looking for is Undying Heritage. We click on that. In Undying Heritage, basically there was a haunted district in the town uh, and it was haunted because of uh, an Gwythian machine, which uh, your nemesis from Pillars of Eternity 1 had, uh, well, was basically doing mischief with. So at the end of that, you could choose to release the souls trapped by the machine back into the wheel to be reincarnated, or you could absorb the souls to empower yourself. Again, a, a neutral act at best, and that's, that's with some heavy justification, considering that your overall goal was to save the world. Um, if you choose the option, yes, I absorb the souls, you will get a plus one to might, and a plus five percent to your health which again if you're choosing a low health character class this can really help you a lot plus five percent to health is more well it's the same as uh, plus one to constitution so it's, it's useful so let's choose that yes i absorb the souls uh, certainly feel free to go through the the rest of all these options i can advise you that this storybook uh, past history creation for Pillars of Eternity 1 is pretty straightforward. If it sounds good, it was likely good. If it sounds bad, it was likely bad. All right, and it's important to go through all of them. You'll get additional material bonuses by uh, going through the Endless Pass of Odd Nua for your uh, Pillars 2 playthrough. So if we look at that, we've got the Blade of the Endless Pass. We want to click on that. And uh, we can click on either or. Uh, depending on your choice here, uh, you will or will not get the, the Blade of the Endless Pass in your cabin in Pillars of Eternity uh, 2. 
So let's reforge that blade. And then with regards to the master below, I mean, yeah, you won't get any benefit for any of these options here. Uh, the best option in Pillars of Eternity 1 was uh, killing the master below and learning Scalebreaker. The master below was a, a very difficult dragon. Well, for most of us, there are some savants at this game, and he was no trouble for them. All right, so that's it. Two attribute points from the, the storybook history creation. I encourage you, explore it on your own. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. It also determines if you get the Blade of the Endless Path. And by completing the White March, you can either get a cannon or some hull improvements, or sorry, and some hull improvements. So by, when you do this, make sure you go through each of these and do as much as you can. Uh, certainly some of your choices for the companions, especially when it comes to Aloth and Eater, will determine some of their personality traits as well as some of their starting gear in the case of Aloth. All right, let's have a quick look at our next set of permanent attribute bonuses for your character. Uh, you can only get these at the beginning of starting a new game. So we'll click on new game. Uh, from there, you can set your difficulty and then you can go into Barath's Blessings. If you've earned any of these blessing points from your previous playthroughs, you can of course spend 15 of them to get bonus attribute points uh, in the form of plus two to each attribute, which is permanent throughout the campaign. Uh, another extremely powerful uh, Barris Blessing that you can get is giving Eater a pet. Uh, having an extra pet on the team can allow you to stack some pretty impressive bonuses. Other good ones, Discount Craftsman. Uh, this is great, especially if you like experimenting with the different magical items that you might find throughout the game. It can be very expensive to upgrade them, and having this helps a lot. Uh, normally, I will also go for uh, Infamous Captain, uh, not because it's an especially hard talent to get in-game, uh, all you have to do is survive a mutiny, but getting your crew to mutiny can be very tedious. So being able to, to purchase it straight up for blessings is, is fantastic. Incidentally, if you want your crew to mutiny so that you can get this powerful talent, which is plus three to intimidate and plus 5% to damage, all you have to do is uh, not feed them and sail around the map. Uh, eventually, after many, many days, your crew will get uh, obviously very unhappy with you and they'll uh, attempt to mutiny. This can take some time though. So uh, yeah, if you can buy this, buy this. If you're trying to get it in game, that's how you do it. Uh, just make the morale as bad as possible. And the easiest way to do this is uh, not to feed your crew and sail around. Incidentally, you can also uh, make sure that your ship is not staffed properly. That is, you have a, a lot of vacant crew slots. So you might just have one person steering the boat and that's it. So when they actually do mutiny, all you gotta do is uh, fight one guy, which is <laughs> pretty, pretty sad for him. Uh, but you'll, you'll get a nice talent out of it. Anyways, the game really rewards you for being a bit of a bastard. All right, on to the next set of attribute bonuses. Well, here we are at Nekataka, which is one of the first major stops of the main quest as you start this game. So let's go into Nekataka quickly. Once you're in Nekataka, you'll start at Queen's Birth, and then the quest, the main story quest, will send you up to the Serpent's Crown. From there, you'll be sent off to an island called Hasongo. So let's sail over to Hasongo and take a look. Hasongo is important not because it gives you bonus attribute points, but because it will restore the attribute points that you are owed from your past Pillars of Eternity 1 history. So some of you may have gone ahead and created your own uh, Pillars of Eternity 1 save, as I showed you previously in this video, and noted that when you started the game, you don't have those attribute points that I promised you would be there. That's because Euthes ran off with a piece of your soul, and you don't get that piece of soul back until you do the story mission associated with Asongo. Incidentally, you don't even need to go to Nekataka to go to Hasongo. You could just sail straight here and complete that piece of story quest, get reunited with your soul, and potentially get those plus two attribute, attribute points I told you about uh, at the beginning of this video. Okay, on to the next stop. 
All right, for our next attribute bonus, we're leaving Hasongo behind, and we're going up to an island with a settlement called Sayuka. Sayuka uh, is important to the Royal Deadfire Company, and by reporting quest outcomes to the Royal Deadfire Company, they will eventually give you a quest called A Matter of Import. This is a very short quest, and once you've completed it, you'll get a quest called Overgrowth. Overgrowth will give you the talent, which gives you a plus one to perception and an accuracy bonus against beasts. To get this, uh, these bonuses, you have to uh, complete the quest uh, the way Galloway wants it completed. You can choose to antagonize Galloway, and instead of an attribute point bonus and the accuracy bonus, you'll get a, a really awesome boss fight. So just consider which reward you'll, you'll have more fun with and, and go with that. All right, time for the final stop and the final permanent attribute point. Here we are heading towards Outcast Respite. This is the island that has our last attribute point bonus that we're looking for. Here we are inside the cave. In here, it's normally populated by a few very tough monsters, so be careful if you attempt to come in here at a low level. I think most of the enemies are level uh, between 16 and 18. Uh, there'll be a, a cauldron brew here brewing, and one of the enemies here will drop a notebook explaining how to brew a potion, which will give you a plus one to any attribute. So let's look at our map and see where we are. So we are all the way over here. So for reference, this is Nekataka, this is Hasongo and Sayuka, which you saw me explore. And then you have to go all the way up to the northwest top of the map. All right, that's our final attribute bonus. You can see them all applied to this character. He's my level uh, 20 cipher. Uh, he's got the Barris Blessings, so he's plus two to all attributes. Uh, he's got the Cauldron Brew, which came from the same map I just showed you, which is giving the plus one to Might. He's got the Effigy's Resentment, which is obtained from throwing the Devil of Karak into the Sacrificial Pit during a previous playthrough or history we uh, created. And this is giving me the plus one to Dexterity and a plus one to Penetration with weapons against Kit. Again, very powerful. And then we have going down we have our infamous captain which i also told you about the plus three to intimidate and the plus five percent damage uh, also it has the benefit i forgot to mention making lower level kit <laughs> enemies terrified so when they see you they'll, they'll cower and not attack which if you're farming ships for money <laughs> makes it extremely easy uh, going down we have savage cunning which is the reward for the quest overgrowth uh, if you side with Galloway, and again it's giving you sorry a plus one to perception and a plus two to survival i said an accuracy bonus against beasts i was wrong it's actually giving you a, a survival skill bonus my apologies Galloway does give you an accuracy bonus against beasts but you don't get that talent until the seeker savior uh, dlc and then it depends on choices that you make on that island all right, and lastly, there's the gift from the machine. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is, gift from the machine. This is the other uh, plus one to attribute bonus that we got from our, our Pillars of Eternity one playthrough. And it is plus one to might and plus five to maximum health. All right, so that's it. I hope this has been informative for those of you looking for uh, permanent attribute point upgrades to your character. I hope you also got some general tips and, and advice that you might not have known about. I hope everybody is well. Take care. Thanks. Bye.